All right, we got a leak search we gotta do. And the first thing I'm noticing is a lot of oil here. So we'll check this out first. Yeah, I did get a couple hits on that valve core. This unit's only two years old. And I got a little bit of a hiss when I took off this, this cap. And we'll check some other spots. All right, here is our coil. Looks like they replaced the air conditioning in 21, but they left the gas furnace, which is an 80% gas furnace. The customer's been talking about, she just bought this house and this unit came with it, but she's been talking about possibly getting a heat pump. So let's check all this out up here. All right, we have a carrier end style coil here. We'll check all this out with the leak detector. All right, this is standing pressure here. We're pretty low. Matter of fact, it was at like 102 and just me hooking my hoses up caused it to drop down to 98. So it's pretty low. Um, so I'm going to pump down what's left in it and then pressurize the line set and coil. Because the only thing I found leaking was these valve cores so far and the caps weren't very tight but that's an awful lot of refrigerant to lose just for valve cores so we're about to pump her down and then we'll fill it with nitro yeah i'm doing that i'm pumped down and i'm doing this because i want to make sure i don't have a leak in my line set or anything coil checked out i didn't see anything at the coil txv anything like that but this line set does run up the wall so I want to make sure I don't have any leak, any leak there. Oops. Yeah, let's put it here. Guys, loose up. We're loose right here. All right. Try to bring her right around 400 and then let it sit. Oh, I overshot my mark. We'll see what it stabilizes at. All right, she stabilized out at 402.7 and I have my temperature probe here for compensation. And we're gonna go ahead and start the test. All right, we'll give that a while and see if it drops. All right, it's been five minutes and I have not budged. Matter of fact, I've went up a point, but that might be because of the temp compensation. Oh well, yeah, look, the point one on the Delta P. We'll give it a few more minutes, but I'm pretty sure this line set and coil are tight. And with my hoses on those uh, valve cores now, they've stopped them from leaking. But we're pretty tight here, and I've been all over this outdoor unit too and haven't found a leak, so. Looks like those valve cores were leaking. Mm -mm -mm. All right, it's been 16 minutes and 23 seconds, and we are gaining pressure, so. Uh, we don't have a leak here, at least not in the line set and coil. So, 
pretty confident our leak was in those valve cores. So we're gonna replace the valve cores and caps and charge this thing back up. All right, we got the vacuum pump running now. Pulling the vacuum on her. Got the valve cores pulled. Right down to about 3,000 right now. Let's see what it gets down to. little guy <laughs> what are you doing little guy I scared him. Look at his little head poking through. <laughs> Funny little guy. All right, we're charging her up now. We had a decent vacuum. It was right around 480 or so. We're charging it up now. It's going to take six pounds. We're going to put six pounds in and stop and see what that's like. The holding charge is uh, 5.42. So, a matter of fact, I'm going to put five and a half in and stop. Which is I right don't here. have a very long line set here, so, you know, 5.42, it might be all it needs, or a five and a half. Get these guys hooked up, and we'll turn this thing on. Find a place to put our suction. All right, we've been running for a couple minutes here. We'll let it stabilize. Sub cooling looks pretty good so far. We can see that super heat come off some. Let's let it go for a little while. All right, this is our temp split. 21, almost 22 degrees. Not bad. This transition sucks. And it is what it is. All right, here's what we got. I really do wish that super heat was a little higher, but I think it kind of is what it is at this point. Especially with that transition, there's two deadheads in that transition. So I think that's why my suction pressure is a lot lower than it should be. And my suction line temperature is very cold. We're gonna quote her to replace that 80 plus gas furnace with a um, more high efficiency condensing gas furnace and uh, replace that transition. All right guys, we got some stuff to change out in this vacant house today. This Ecobee thermostat, which is barely hanging on, is coming off. Honeywell T6 going in. Another one upstairs uh, is coming off. Not an Ecobee, another one. Um, Honeywell T6 going in. There's really nothing wrong with this thermostat except it is locked with a passcode by the previous tenant that we cannot contact. And I've tried to reset it and I told the, uh, told the owner, I said, look, let's just take that out of there and put a, put a Honeywell in there. So he said, okay. And we're doing the upstairs one also because that one's kind of older. We're also going to replace the contactor and the capacitor on the outdoor unit. So let's get going. All right, no tools needed to take the, the wiring out. And I can tell a homeowner did this because of these little tags on them. Any professional would not need these tags. So, all right, let's get this wiring out. 
I'll get the screws out and uh, we'll put the Honeywell. All right, we got the Honeywell back plate on uh, and then now we're gonna hook this up uh, traditional. We're just going from, basically we're using the shaded ones here. The shaded con uh, connectors are conventional or gas furnace. So Y, G, C, W, and R. And that's what we got, so that's what we're hooking up. So pretty easy, fellas. All right, where we have a common wire here, we don't need batteries in the thermostat, but I put them in anyway just so it holds its date and time in case of a power outage. It will give you an error code, or not an error, um, uh, a low battery indicator when the batteries are low, but just change the batteries, you know? A homeowner can do that. You can show the homeowner how to change the batteries. It's very simple. Grab the thermostat like this firmly, take it off the wall, change your batteries, snap it back on. All right, after you set your date and time, it takes you directly into the installer settings. Now this first one is gonna be scheduling. Now whether or not your customer wants scheduling or not, you can turn it all the way off, but I like to leave it on because you can always go and turn it off in the settings later. So just in case somebody ever wants to set up a schedule, they can without having to figure out how to get into the installer settings. So I'll leave that on and then turn it off later. So, and we can move on to the next one by hitting select moves you on to your next option and then we'll just work through these we're not even going to really be changing much because the thermostat comes pre-set up for conventional and that's what we want so we're just going to work through these and make sure nothing needs to be changed all right we're all set up so when we go to turn the system on you'll see it'll come up following schedule so all you're going to do is go to menu the very first option is programming you're going to hit select and then just go off hit select again and it's saved. Home, now you're not programmed. Um, you're not under programming anymore. The homeowner can go in there and turn it back on if they wanted to by just going here and turning it on. But now they have that option without you taking it completely out of the equation just from the start, so. All right, so we're going to bump this down i don't have the power to the unit on yet because i still have one more of these guys to change out all right we just turned on here got this upstairs one replaced a little bummed out this is as far over as i could get this because they put the hole like right here right by a stud i couldn't move the hole over any further but so i'll have to do a little bit of touch up paint there but it is what it is um in a delay right now downstairs one should be also in a delay Yeah, as soon as these two come on, we'll make sure they're working. Let me just show you what we're connected to. I think I might have made a video for this, a diagnosis video. I just can't remember. Maybe I did. I'll have to look back. If I do, I will link it. Here's our EWC control board. Both thermostats go to this. So that's where it is. That's what's happening. All right, we do have a contactor and a capacitor to replace outside, and we're going to go over some other things on this too. So I just wanted to make sure they came on, and I'll just kill it at the outdoor unit to change those components out there. All right, both of our thermostats are calling. Zone 1, Zone 2 open. Compressor on, fan on. So looks like we're good to go with the thermostats. All right, we got a new capacitor, new contactor throat on this one. We had this guy on there, looking pretty rough. And we had this guy on there, it was a turbo cap, it wasn't in range. So we went ahead and took the turbo cap off, put a dual capacitor on there, put the 1.5 pole contactor, and she's back off and running. <laughs> 